Hello and welcome to Behind the Lines. I'm Diane Dayton. Today we're going to talk about women's digestive health. And with us right now, we have Dr. Sadia Chesty, and you are a doctor with RGAL, and you are also the medical director at the Women's Digestive Health Center. Yes, that's correct, Diane. Thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. There Oh, the issues we're going to talk about, there are so many problems with digestive health that happens at different ages for women, right? Yes, absolutely. And it's a topic that's so dear to me and important for the community. So I'm, I'm so glad to be able to discuss this with you. Yes. How did you get involved with women's health like this? Well, I'm a board certified gastroenterologist and that involves a number of years of training in endoscopy. And, and this center is really about offering women the latest in terms of technology, the, the um, in terms of what we can offer in procedures and really state of the art what, uh, and, and incorporating that with lifestyle modifications and a holistic approach so that women can have the benefit of having a treatment of their basic digestive health. Boy, and that affects everything, doesn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Extending from quality of life, from everyday activities so that women can feel that they can um, play the multiple roles that we do as mothers, mm -hmm. as professionals, as uh, you know, wives, and, and be able to function. And yeah. so that women can have a place where their uh, GI issues can be treated and addressed. Yeah. So physically, where is the Women's Digestive Health Center located? The center is located on Good Drive. It's um, 694 Good Drive, um, and it's uh, actually located at the Women's um, and Babies Hospital. And uh, so it's it's a center that's run entirely by women, mm -hmm. and um, and and basically it's. Uh, 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 very close. I mean, we have multiple mm -hmm. multiple offices, um, okay. RGAL, and this one we decided we wanted a unique location that we can really focus on this topic. Well, we know that this is an important topic and affects a lot of us. And you see patients from what, like s age 16 on up, right? Yes, yeah, 16 on up, up to you know women in their 80s and 90s, and it's amazing how women face problems at different times of their lives in very different ways, whether it's a teenage patient that I have that's mm -hmm. coping with being able to attend high school classes or college classes and dealing with ongoing digestive issues, to women in their, in their 60s, 70s, 80s, going through menopause and dealing with issues related to incontinence. And I'm amazed at the number of GI issues that women face, whether it's constipation, mm -hmm. bloating, nausea, abdominal pain and it's it's quite common yeah it sure is now this center is relatively new yes and what you just said it's run by women for women boy that's really key because sometimes we as a woman feel more comfortable talking to another woman about issues like this right absolutely absolutely and one of the things that I really advocate for women is to be able to address their issues because for, for years you know people uh, women women are very reluctant to discuss their personal GI health issues mm -hmm. sometimes with a male practitioner so this really gives them an opportunity to address issues issues maybe that they've been putting off mm -hmm. for years yeah. and, um, and really come to a center that they feel comfortable. Sometimes I guess too, we get confused with different signs and symptoms as to what is going on in our bodies, don't we? Absolutely, that's a very good point, Diane, because that's that's true. And a lot of times, um, women can can use the um, the internet or other resources, and there's so many good resources. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. sometimes it can be misleading, and sometimes what they attribute to something that is just the way that their body functions, or perhaps you know they've been told that they have IBS, could be something something significant. So it is important to be proactive to to discuss any symptoms or problems that that uh, that you're having mm -hmm. and and see whether it's something else perhaps it's celiac um, disease that's been that that has not been yet diagnosed or if, if it's inflammatory bowel disease or diverticulitis and and so it is important to get adequate medical attention in order to bring out some of these symptoms and get an appropriate diagnosis yeah I know like you were saying when you do go on the internet there is so much wonderful information but wading through it can really get confusing absolutely and that's why we need someone like you to help us navigate 
Absolutely, it's so important. I advocate women speaking with their healthcare providers and, and, and really sorting through their symptoms mm -hmm. in order to, to, of course, eliminate anything, anything significant, anything that can be problematic. And, and uh, sometimes these symptoms could be signs of things to come later in life. And mm. the goal is gonna be to avoid complications and long-term problems. Okay. When do we need to come to see you? At the sign of what? I mean, you know, sometimes we, especially as women, will ignore, okay, maybe this is, it'll start to take care of itself. But when do we need to look at our signs and symptoms and say, hey, we've got to go in and see the doctor? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that's a great question because a lot of times, you know, s symptoms of a diagnosis such as celiac could be something simple like bloating or, or very subtle weight loss and other things that you wouldn't expect um, like anemia and, and there's a gamut of GI disorders that can have subtle symptoms. So I, for the most part, I think that even though women, you know, we try to have great coping skills, I think that when you're finding that it's interfering with your daily life, it's interfering with your ability to go through your work day or your ability to enjoy eating mm -hmm. or to really participate in social or home activities, I think that's the time when there's a problem and that that, that should be really looked at and discussed with your healthcare professional. What is celiac? Well, celiac, celiac, you know, it's actually considered to be an allergic reaction to wheat. Mm -hmm. And so there's a distinction. And, you know, this has become a topic that, that I mentioned because it's also received a lot of press recently. A lot of the movie stars have, have been uh, kind of promoting it and discussing it. And now, essentially, it's, it's a serious illness that if someone truly has the diagnosis could potentially do a lot of damage. And even, although rare, it can lead to a malignancy called lymphoma. Mm -hmm. so, so the first step is to establish whether an individual really has the diagnosis and that really involves the help of a gastroenterologist or a healthcare provider in order to decipher some of the some of the symptoms and some of the the testing that's available now that's different than glucose intolerance and that mm -hmm. really opens up the topic of lifestyle modifications because okay. a lot of people with irritable bowel syndrome can have pretty significant symptoms consuming, you know, ingesting certain food products, and that includes wheat. Okay. Even very healthy food in mm. large portions can be problematic and, and bring on a multitude of symptoms. Wow. So so there, there is a variation. So anybody can have glucose intolerance, which mm -hmm. is that they simply are in, unable to tolerate um, food products, because a lot of times our environment, especially the food that we consume, are, are triggers, and they can mm. really offset a whole series of symptoms that can, can make a woman very uncomfortable. Irritable bowel syndrome, we hear a lot about that these days. Yes, extremely common, about 5 million people with irritable bowel syndrome, and the majority of, the, of, of people who have irritable bowel syndrome are women. So we really are, and, and you know, and, and for a multiple, multiple reasons, I think that um, when it comes down to it, physiologically, we'll, we're built different, you know. And so um, symptoms that are related to discomfort, <laughs> bloating, abdominal pain have to do with visceral hypersensitivity, and women sense discomfort in a very different way. I was reading in an article that you were a part of and was published that 75% of these issues are women. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, very That's common amongst women. That's outrageously high. It, it is, yes, yes. And, and so and I think the important thing is to have a, a solution. What can we do? What can we do as women to have better um, ability to, to cope with symptoms or even address symptoms? Mm -hmm. and, and so one of the things that I really advocate at the Women's Center is that each individual woman is different. So the treatment plan that would be put together for one person is gonna be very different than, than the other. And one of the things we look at is the person as a whole. You know, what can we do to change your lifestyle, whether that involves diet, your exercise 
your, um, you know, every, what, what is it? What are the triggers that are causing the symptom? Is it stress level? And a lot of times it's very challenging. A lot of times stressors are not that easily eliminated. Right. So there's two components. I mean, there's certainly medications that can address symptoms, but more than that, more than just advocating medications, I think doing a holistic approach where a woman's entire lifestyle is looked at in order to help identify what it is that's causing the problem and then addressing it. That makes sense. We're going to put the website up on the screen where you can find right. out more information about the center and also about these different GI issues, too. Uh, the holistic approach that the center takes, I think, is really important. What we're going to do is take a brief pause. When we come back, we're going to talk about how we can get treatment at this wonderful new center. Stay with us. Welcome back to Behind the Lines. We're talking about women's digestive health issues with Dr. Chesty, and you are with RGAL, and you're also the medical director with the Women's Digestive Health Center. Boy, colon cancer, colonoscopies, address mm -hmm. that. Absolutely, colon cancer is uh, very common, up to um, more than 100,000 cases are diagnosed um, a year, and uh, in addition to another 40,000 cases of rectal cancer, so very common. And so I think that women, you know, we need to take advantage of the of the uh, very simple means of preventing colon cancer, mm -hmm. um, having a colonoscopy. And so, um, you know, I, I think that having this advantage of offering women um, the opportunity to come in to discuss colonoscopy, see if they qualify, if they need it, and, and getting that set up is important. There's also, when you get the colonoscopy, you can look at other issues, too, that might be there, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So colonoscopy, although it's just a wonderful means of, of detecting and preventing colon cancer, um, there's a variety, a variety of symptoms that, that would require a colonoscopy in order to diagnose whether it's diarrhea or sometimes abdominal pain or bleeding. Mm -hmm. Um, so th those would be important issues to have a colonoscopy to determine what the cause is. Okay. Now, when you treat patients, you also treat them at various locations too, right? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So we have a very we have a location um, right here, close to Brownstown, right on Oregon Pike. There's another one at the Health Campus um, off of Harrisburg Pike, and and of course the, I can also see patients over at the Women and Babies office that we have. So so we have some options okay. for for patients, yes. Mm -hmm. So the holistic approach that you take mm -hmm. really encompasses a lot of different types of therapies or treatments, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and you know, there, there's really strong data, studies that have shown that I'll give you an example. It's, it seems that women, especially as women get older, incontinence, and, mm -hmm. and incontinence is such a, a, such a tough issue, mm -hmm. such a tough issue for a woman to bring up with their primary care doctor. Um, and, and a lot of times, you know, people, women are very reluctant to admit or even discuss that they're having this issue. And very strong data to suggest that biofeedback therapy has a lot of benefit, very beneficial in controlling symptoms so that women can be functional and able to go out into markets and, and go shopping and be able to work without dealing with this very, what can be a very embarrassing issue of fecal incontinence. Boy, there are some food issues and foods that we need to be aware of that might trigger different things. Carbs is one, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think I think in, in general, everything in moderation, but carbs, especially we live in a society where it's so convenient mm -hmm. to have processed foods. And a lot of times, people can have diets that are that uh, consist of a lot more carbohydrates than, than their body can handle. And uh, so it, especially if IBS, bloating, abdominal pain, diarrhea is an issue, then, then doing an, uh, looking, looking at the entire diet and seeing whether there is an excess of certain types of foods, including carbohydrates that are triggering the symptoms, can be very helpful. I think also spicy foods, fatty foods, alcohol and coffee, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All of those yes, those are, those are things that, that commonly, and sometimes, sometimes it is, it is a, a quick fix that way, that, mm -hmm. that just revamping a woman's lifestyle and what she's used to um, and seeing whether there's room for modifying that can be very helpful. So each pay, each person and any woman that comes to the center, we really focus on giving them an individualized treatment plan.
There are procedures that can be done to help with some of these different issues. Tell me about those and where are they done? Absolutely. Yes, yes. So so the the variety of procedures, I mean as in general in the in the group, you know, we, we are we, we, we do colonoscopies, we do upper endoscopies, endoscopic ultrasound, ERCP, and you know the, the goal is to just really incorporate um, all the advances that there are in GI and, and we are, you know, above the national average in terms of detection of polyps and, and, and and so that's very important as gastroenterologists for us to maintain that and offer that. And the added convenience that we like to provide as a practice is multiple locations. So mm -hmm. yes, there is a location right off of Oregon Pike that a patient, if that's if that works best for their schedule and, and that's where they can get to, that would be a location for them at the health campus, um, in addition to all, all four hospitals in the area. Okay. We all want to know, are these procedures painful? What do we need to know? Yes, and, and you know that that's very important to me and, and my colleagues because you know comfort during procedure is extremely important, and I can I can tell you that that I you know typically sit down with my patients and I tell them you know I will guarantee that they will be very comfortable during the procedure. We have anesthesiologists on site, mm -hmm. and you know and, and again every patient's different, but the, for the most part the one. Thing Thing that's common amongst all patients is that with the advances we have in technology mm -hmm. and the ability to keep the patients as comfortable as possible during the procedure so that that's not a non-issue. Yeah. And if you're just joining us, one of the things we're talking about, it's women's digestive health issues. And there's a center, the Women's Digestive Health Center that has just opened up this year because these issues are so prevalent with women. Absolutely. The numbers again with that, like one of the things we were talking about is how women can taste bitter and sweet flavors more than men can. Absolutely. So we are yes, sensitive. Yes. We are, we are, and and it's it, we're, we're built differently. I mean, from the from the time that we, that food enters the mouth to the time that it's getting processed, we uh, women you, for a variety of reasons, whether there's hormonal activity, whether it's visceral hypersensitivity, which basically means that mm -hmm. the innervation, the way that we sense things, women just are, are able to sense things very differently than men. And and there could be two people that have very similar diets, and and the one. A woman can have very significant um, reaction in terms of how she processes foods, mm -hmm. and that continues from the time that mouth, you know, the, the, our food enters the mouth all the way down. Okay, mm -hmm. and you see patients essentially from age 16 on up. Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. reiterate what we need to look at as signs and symptoms if we're having them that we need to come and see you. Absolutely. Any anyone who's having abdominal pain, if you're having pain and discomfort, whether it's related to eating or not, that's something that needs to be looked at. Anyone who's not able to tolerate food, anyone who has nausea, vomiting, anyone who has bleeding, um, rectal bleeding, um, or, or dark stool, you know, those are all, all things to look at. Weight loss, if, if you're trying to maintain your weight and, and you're losing weight, bloating, abdominal discomfort, mm -hmm. and I'm amazed at the number of women that have these issues, whether it is constipation, bloating, abdominal pain just a variety of, of symptoms and these are things to certainly bring up with your health care provider okay. you know the days of being shy about having these symptoms addressed you know that that that's gone and we really advocate women taking a proactive role and mm -hmm. seeing whether there are uh, there is a significant, you know, if there's something wrong, whether there is a significant diagnosis that needs to be addressed, and what, and if it is IBS, then putting together a treatment plan that can help these symptoms dissipate, so that we can lead very functional lives. And it is treatable. We don't have to live that way, right? Yes, that's absolutely right, Diane. Yes. That's the important yes. part to, to go when you know this is happening and trust that little inner voice mm -hmm. that sometimes says, hey, this isn't quite right. And I think we as women too, you know, we're pretty intuitive, you know, with our bodies, whether we yes. decide mm -hmm. to go with thoughts that we have or whether we ignore it. We need to listen to the, our, our bodies, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And and also just look look at our entire lifestyles. What what is it that we're eating? You know, what is our physical activity level? Mm -hmm. Are there stressors that we can modify? So yeah. so really looking at, at a women's health in its entirety is mm -hmm. gonna be key. Yeah. What are your goals for this center as medical director? My goal is, you know, for the most part, to provide a comfortable environment where women can come and discuss their GI health issues. You know, there are certain health issues like 
liver diseases. There are mm -hmm. certain liver diseases that are much more common in women, um, in addition to other conditions, whether it's IBS. And so this is going to be a center where we can incorporate, again, just the latest in terms of technology and what we have available, the latest medications that we can offer, in addition to incorporating a holistic approach where women can be referred to or can have access to biofeedback therapy, to exercise programs, to physical therapy, um, to dietary modification, so that this is really, you know, kind of revamping a woman's digestive health in addition to their entire health. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to reiterate too, this is for women run by women. So mm -hmm. feeling comfortable talking to another woman about some of these intimate issues is really key, right? Yes. We're going to put once again the website up on the screen. What are we going to find there? A variety of resources. You know, we, we keep that updated pretty regularly. Um, you know, please come on and take a look. And, and we have information specifically about IBS, about a variety of procedures that are offered, other disorders, liver disorders, um, dietary help. And, you know, one of the things that, that I really advocate for women is, is to, to be able to access these. You know, mm -hmm. the uh, one thing that can happen is that someone can be giving a diagnosis and then just kind of, you know, it's done once the testing is done. And it's really a continuing continuing process we are we're, we're on Facebook so so you know feel free to come on and, and like us and and so we, we like to have an interactive approach and really work closely with primary care physicians That's, a lot good. of times yeah. this is an ongoing lifelong mm -hmm. you know uh, uh, just having that ability to, to be updated with with uh, with GI health and, and being able to keep up uh, on top yeah. of issues that's that going to be important, great. yes. Makes sense, the collaborative effort. We're going to take a brief pause and we come back, a final thought. Stay with us. Thank you for joining us on Behind the Lines. We hope we've given you some valuable information. And thank you to Flowers by Paulette for the beautiful flowers on our set. We leave you with some final words from Dr. Chesty. Hi there, I'm Dr. Sadia Chesty board certified gastroenterologist and director of the Women's Digestive Health Center. The reason why I feel that it's so important to have a center like this is that women need an environment where they feel comfortable to address their health issues, particularly GI health. And this has been an area where women have often felt like they haven't received the attention that they need, or perhaps their issues have not been taken seriously. This environment is run entirely by women, and women have that opportunity to come at regardless of what stage they're at, what issues they have, whether it's related to pregnancy or menopause or um, just everyday issues that affect their quality of life, their um, work, their home life. I recommend for women to stay proactive when it comes to their digestive health issues, and we hope that this center will provide the right environment for women to be able to do that. I recommend that women are, feel empowered about their digestive health issues and get the necessary medical attention that they need.